know, right next to you, right behind you. You go up this double up zigzag element and it'll be perfectly aligned to that track and to the downstream connecting track onto the launch. So it's a curve going into the launch section. Once we move forward on our second launch experience, this switch will then move away from us to a secondary position. And you see that track right there, it's gonna come towards us and it'll align itself with the main launch track. So you have two switches. So think of it like a train track switch, yeah. something kind of like that, except it does it in less than two seconds. Yeah, so you're going, you're going up here once, and then you're going a different way to this second time. Yeah, so we'll go this direction towards the top hat, then you'll launch backwards. So that's where you hit your 67 miles per hour speed, hit the reverse bike, and then it'll go forward. This switch will stay aligned in that condition, and you won't actually see it move until the ride vehicle is on the bottom drop on the top hat element. Then it'll move back into this position um, to allow the next train to experience the launch one, the first inversion, and so forth. How many blocks are on this ride? Well, we have two trains on the ride, so I, I think we have like five blocks, something like that, which is more than what you need. You, don't, you usually want one extra block per train. Yeah, we're actually gonna be starting commissioning very soon. And part of the beginning parts of a commissioning process is we go into an electrical IO checkout. We check all of our cable terminations on the launch system. We check our terminations on the low voltage ride control system. Um, that is typically like a two to three week process before you even start moving trains or anything like that. And on a typical commissioning process, you cycle one train at a time. And then as you progress through the commissioning, you add a second train and you keep going there for it. There's all these scenarios that you have to go through. So it's not just cycling a train over and over and over and over again. That's part of it, but you have to look at all those scenarios, safety block checks, things like that, that we're intentionally trying to see what, what the ride does and experiences. So that'll be starting here within the next month. The weather being so good, you guys in on schedule? Or? Yeah, we're doing pretty good on schedule. Actually, we are. So we've had a few. Susie, we haven't had any snow yet, have we? We haven't, we haven't. But don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, now we're going to have snow it's and it's going to be question. my fault. <laughs> but the weather's actually been pretty good every, from what yeah, you said, Yeah, right? actually, what well, you guys know, it's been a pretty mild January, but then I guess around the 20th, 18th, 20th, January really came. We're hoping April comes early, since January came late. Um, it's much better for construction, believe me. Go ahead. Who did the design of the track? Absolutely. So we, we so Susie and I and uh, the, the project team, we picked this particular site. We wanted a dynamic experience. We wanted airtime elements. We wanted inversions. We wanted to twist and bend this track differently than it has been done before. So we did work with Intamin Worldwide and their conceptual design team to kind of generate this layout. And when you work through that layout process, it's not like you accept the initial layout. We talk through elements, we debate different elements, we move elements around, we move the station around. There's a lot of conversation that has to happen on the ride layout and also what the site interface is gonna be. Right, so from the beginning, we get a survey done of the site, the general site where we wanna uh, put everything, right? And then we work with uh, Jonathan and the ride manufacturer on how those elements are going to fit on our site. Um, obviously, a different park, a lot of the parks down in Florida are pretty flat, right? So they're going to have to have taller columns and things like that. Um, we have very tall columns at the high areas, but there's also uh, really short columns down by the water. So we're taking advantage of our terrain and our topography. Um, so it's kind of a give and take thing. I guess it all has to kind of fit together. Chesapeake Bay permitting all the We did do uh, Chesapeake Bay permitting. We, we are always planning a few years out, so we do uh, have to look at whatever permitting we have to. We have to worry with D, DQ, Chesapeake Bay, uh, certainly James Bay County, and um, VADR, Virginia uh, Music Device. So. Oh, goodness. Uh, about three acres, I'd say. Um, and I don't know that all that's totally uh, developed, but does that sound right? Is that right?
Are you guys going to come all ride it? Yes. yes. Spring 2020. <laughs> um, if this is the 95 degree angle, um, what is the angle of this? What is the We're 90 degrees here. 90 degrees. Straight 90 degrees. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, from the top hat down, instead of just coming straight down, it actually goes back on itself so that's going to be a, a fun element it's going to be interesting too on this reverse spike you'll actually experience five seconds of weightlessness when you're transversing from backwards to forward so that'll be that'll be a lot of fun right how high is it expected to actually climb the spike itself uh, we're probably going to be within 10 feet from the edge so it depends on how the train's loaded so yeah. 